So, check my voicemail. Customer calls me multiple times and leaves messages. Window cleaning, chandelier window cleaning. I'm on my eight year wedding anniversary vacation. So I'm sending out texts to people. Hey, I'll call you back, right? I just do want to be on the phone when I'm on my eight year wedding anniversary vacation with my wife. I love my wife. And last time we went on vacation, I snuck off and I was on the phone for an hour because I need money. I got to run the business because I need money. I got to make it work or everything is going to fall apart if I just take a couple fucking days off work. I got in a big fight with my wife and it hurt her feelings and didn't work. So this time I learned my lesson. When you have a wedding anniversary vacation, you just shut your business off. So anyways, I'm off vacation. <laughs> I get a call back. I I call the customer back and he leaves me another message. I've been trying to get a hold of you and I really have this where we have a condo on the go thing. Oh, condo association. Okay, this could be a good thing. Call the customer back. He's like, I hear you were on your eight year wedding anniversary vacation. That's just amazing. I thank you. Cause because I just sent out texts to let customers know why, right? And obviously I have a calling center and a secretary and all that stuff. But some people need to talk to you. So here's what happens. You're like, would you get to the point, Kelfus? I love your stories! But you never just stop. You just keep going on and on and on and on. I'm unsubscribing. Oh, yeah? Well, go ahead. I'm just playing. Please don't unsubscribe. Now listen. So the guy tells me, well, I've been married for, you know, 50 plus years. He was an amazing human being. I really look up and aspire to be like this old man who called me. Seem older than me. He's not old, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, dude, you've been married 53 years. That's an amazing accomplishment. You must be a great example to all the people around you. Now let's talk business. So, so I'm like thinking this is going to be a huge job. He goes on and tells me this 10 minute story and about how he has a, a chandelier because we do chandelier cleaning, but only specific chandelier cleaning. And there's pretty much, I don't know. It's a $100 minimum if you want me to bring a ladder and touch a chandelier. I don't think I'm special. It's just if you break somebody's chandelier, your ass is on the line. Some chandeliers cost $1,500 to clean. And unless you specialize in chandelier cleaning, you should not fucking touch a chandelier. Why? Because I have another video about this. that If you're cleaning people's chandeliers, you better bring mats all over inside of the house. Thick, cushy mats. And have a table with drop cloths and a system where you take each piece of glass on and off, wipe it down, and put it all back on the same way and take pictures and document everything. Chandelier cleaning is an entire career in and of itself. I learned that the hard way up in some... So anyways, he's telling me this whole story. Then all of a sudden, does it ever dawn on you when you're on the phone with a customer? And then, and then next thing you know, you got your phone, you're going... You just want to cut them off, but you can't because you're in a professional position. You can't be, listen, guy, it's it's not a good fit. Click. I just You ever just want to hang up just like you want to hang up on this video on me right now because I'm not going to do the point? Now, listen. Actually, I'm just like, I have a lot of shit going on. I'm like a little frustrated. I'm taking it all out on you on this video right now. And this is my gift to you. You know, I got on the phone with my buddy Scotty the other day. He's my mentor. I look up to I love Scotty. You know, Keith, I did watch some of your videos, and it just seems like you're just getting a little hubris, a little bit arrogant, and you just need to tone it down a little bit. I'm like, I'm not, man. I'm just trying to be myself. What was that? Oh, that's John here. That's John! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... All right, so here's what he wants me to hire me to do. He has one little tiny chandelier. It's just a light fixture. It's not even a chandelier with one single bulb. And he wants to hire a window cleaner to come and bring, which he doesn't even understand, the type of ladders or what you have to do or if it doesn't reach the wall, into his home. Flat paint walls, liability, all this stuff. Two stories, which is a different level of work comp, depending on how much of it you do. Anyways, all the way up two stories to clean one single light fixture in one bulb. And he's telling me the whole story all about it for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. You know why? Because I just, I, hey, hey, buddy, hey, 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 hey. 
thank you for the opportunity and thank you for calling me three times over the past two weeks and leaving me a hundred messages about this and I'm back on vacation. Now, you've put so much hope and energy and thought into this thinking that I'm going to be your guy. But I think it's too small of a job for us. I have a $500 minimum. I have a $300 minimum, but I not right now I have a $500 minimum. Why? Because it's a $300 minimum. If I'm going to bring a big-ass ladder into your home, and I'm going to be the one personally doing it, going all the way up there. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because I don't want anybody else going all the way up there. Because if you, let's just say you charge, oh, I'll do it for a hundred bucks. Yeah, you're in there for three hours bringing a big ass ladder and all this liability. Yeah, but it's just one bulb. Yeah, but it's up on the fucking moon. Think, have you ever seen these videos on YouTube where the guys climb all the way to the top of the thing? It's like, it's like, it's like, a, like a light tower. It's a, it's a cell phone tower. I don't know what it is. It's like in Beijing. There's a bulb. They, I've literally, I've heard about this. They got to shut down the power to the whole tower and the whole city goes, yeah. And these motherfuckers got like three and a half hours to climb all the way to the top, change one bulb, and then parachute all the way back down to the earth. And if they don't get that shit done, they turn the power on and your ass is fried. So I told him, as soon as I said 500 bucks, this old man goes, whoa! He was totally shocked. I said, Pfft. The reason I'm acting like this, there are people that come in my YouTube comments and they go, you're a ripoff, you're a scam artist, you're an asshole. How dare you not want to live live homeless for the rest of your life and be broke as shit and be on fucking welfare and never have any, any, anything in your life ever. You should work your ass off for all these rich people for the rest of your life and bring ladders in their houses dripping in sweat and look at their Mercedes and secretly take pictures of their Lamborghinis and wish that one day you could have that stuff too. But no, because God did not ordain you to be successful. He ordained all these other people. You're supposed to be their bitch. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're supposed to be, and that's all you're ever going to be. You're a scam artist for wanting to make sure you have a legitimate business with payroll and, and general liability and a worker's comp and a bookkeeper and so you can actually not be biting your fucking nails at tax time. You're a fucking scam artist for wanting to have food in your fridge and having a car that runs with gas in it and wanting to take your, your family on a vacation once a year. You fucking scam artist.